Hi, my name is Nate, and I'm joined with Jay Choi. And we're here to talk about how, if and when, could we splice my DNA and somehow create twins of delicious two wolves that we could probably set a free and then hopefully gets adopted? Genetic, Cue the intro. I'm learning. Cue the intro music now. <laughs> Yo. Rush of ideas and just imagination and chaos, you know, you make things, you break things in the span of seconds just with your thoughts. Kinesthetic style, but only within the mind. Take a whole idea and like deconstruct it, and then rebuild it in like a completely different way. Swimming in chaos. Welcome to... I just can't even with myself right now. <laughs> Let's go. We're learning today. Um... Yeah, so we're learning today, which means, um... I love it because I feel like you're not happy because you're not learning today. I am not learning today. We, being me, are teaching <laughs> Nate today about genetics and a little bit of biology because Nate loves T.I. I don't know why. I don't know what's I don't, wrong actually, with him. I just need to know. <laughs> he does not love T.I. He wants T.I. for know. his T.E. purposes. Yes. Um, also, I didn't take bio in high school. So. He did not take bio in high school, folks. So go ahead and ask me any of your questions about biology. Well, we can start with, well, actually, I don't even know where. Well, I actually want to get down and gritty already, like genetics. Right, like go. what starts with it? What's the basics should I get into? Like, how do I know that what I'm watching on TV is completely false? Because it doesn't mm, make sense. Okay, everything Incorrect. you're watching on TV initially already assume it's false. Okay. <laughs> um, on that basis, uh, let's go into the thing that you like to talk about all the time, which is splicing, right? Only because I watch them, right? I don't know why I happen to watch them a lot, but... Yeah, a lot of movies say they're, like, splicing DNA, and, like, when they splice it, they're introducing other sorts of DNA from other animals. Um, I want to start off by saying, obviously, okay. that's not possible, which is why we don't have any of that, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. right? It's not like, it's like, oh, I want to make a human with four arms and three legs, you know, we're just gonna splice a Lilo and Stitch, I don't know, I don't know, like, we can't, you can't do that, right? <laughs> Lilo and Stitch. So, the way that a lot of these movies portray it, I think, is, like, they like to say, like, oh, we, like, like the movie you're talking about called Splice, I think, is that the name of the movie? Yeah. We talked about it in episode one, and I never watched it, but I did look up the synopsis. Be sure, just to give you a headache. I looked up the synopsis, and I was like, this is upsetting, but <laughs> besides that, um, Essentially, they, like, say what they pulled in some sort of DNA so that this creature will be a hermaphrodite. I don't know if they expected it to be hermaphrodite, but... Wait, it just ended up being a hermaphrodite because did, they yeah. happened to pull from something that is a herma hermaphrodite. But the thing about that that's interesting is that, like, there are, like, intersex humans already, so I don't know why they, like, went there. They're bored. Yeah, okay, anyway, but besides that, to, like, go into, like, the genetics, I guess, like, um, okay, what I told Nate earlier is that, like, no one does this kind of experimentation on humans anyway, so technically we don't know what we can or cannot do, however. Oh, explain why, like, why can't we experiment? Oh, okay, well, first of all, there's, like, an ethics committee for humans, of course, there's actually a certain amount of mice that you're allowed to kill in a year, you can't kill over a certain amount, I don't know the number. As far as humans go, I think it's in... Britain, like, that's where the human ethics thing is or whatever, but they decided that, like, you can't keep an embryo alive past 12 days, a human embryo, because mm -hmm. at that point it gets ethically murky, I guess. Um, so, in that case, like, I think the longest that labs keep embryos alive are, like, about nine days, and then they never exceed that number, because, again, it gets ethically questionable. Yeah, so just ar to start off, like, we don't really know because we haven't done actual experimentation and um, experimentation that we've done on other like model organisms such as like you know fruit flies mice dogs like even then there's still ethics like again you're not allowed to kill over a certain amount of mice every year right so there's that i guess to get specifically into like splicing itself is that there was this chinese doctor dr he it's spelled h-e i don't know how to um, pronounce it um, he actually, it might actually be just he, yeah. Yeah, uh, he, ha, Dr. He, actually, he genome edited these embryos, I think of twins, of these two girls, or maybe it was just one of them, but he edited them so that they don't have the receptor to get HIV, which mm. is really crazy. Um, I think he was like in prison for life um, because 
it's unethical and he wasn't, I don't even think he got proper consent from like the parents. There's no way that the government would approve of that, you know, like mm-hmm. no one approves of that. Um, he so anyway. he went for it anyway. Um, I don't actually know what, like what's going on with him right now, but he did get jailed, um, obviously. But the problem with that is that like, we actually don't know the effects of genes beyond like immediately what we know because the genes have so many different effects than just the one that we think that it does like things are so complex we barely know anything about it truly Mm -hmm. so it's already kind of unpredictable already especially with the lack of information we don't have enough information like if we're saying hey this gene is a receptor for hiv so we're gonna get rid of this part of the gene we don't know what else that part of the gene does. And we Plus, how could just... you when you can't experiment on human beings? Exactly. So there's already, like, yeah. So there's mm-hmm. just no basis for a lot of it. Gotcha. So there are a lot yeah. of plant geneticists. I am not particularly interested in it. Like, it's cool, but it's not my direct interest. Because mm-hmm. but... you're more of the... Wait, what was, again, your, your direction um, with your genetics? Well, we currently work with, like, dog genetics. So I don't directly uh... work with any dogs either. We just are analyzing their genomes with... Um, repeated sequences in the genome mm-hmm. that's the um, that's the vague answer <laughs> delish yeah well the dogs aren't delicious but they're all right <laughs> does that look kind of job to see if either one i've never eaten a dog by the way just so i'm I vegetarian <laughs> so also, neither of us will know but also well, possibilities i mean are i was saying it because you're filipino and i'm korean and i do know a lot of well not i don't know literally but i do know filipinos do eat so the koreans used to eat them well i mean they still i think kind of do but like kind of recently like the um president who is now in jail i think she um <laughs> She made like a blue house, I think it's called the blue house in Korea, like a blue house dog, like the first dogs to discourage people from like eating them and more like keeping them as pets, that sort of thing. I did not know that. So I guess I learned something else again too. You learned oh. something else. I Yay. learned something else. That is so fascinating. I didn't really, like, sometimes you don't really think about just how complicated life is and then you realize, no, it's complicated. The genetic mm-hmm. is a whole like can of worms ready to happen which of course you work with worms oh yeah i do um i work with nematode worms they're not like worms you could see they're like microscopic they're about yeah. a millimeter long so on the plates that are like around this size you could actually see the really oh, big yeah. ones with your naked long. eye you could, you could still yeah um when they're adults so you could on, on, on like the plates you could see the really big ones with your naked eye but like in order to like move them over and stuff you need to use the microscope um so yeah i do work with nematode worms so they're really little um I think I'm going back on campus this week to try and save the ones that are there. Let's, like, I'm trying to see if they're still alive. Salvage them. Save them. Yeah, because we usually need to move them to a new food source every two to three weeks. And the last time we went in was, like, six weeks ago. So I'm hoping they're not all dead. They're still alive. Well, they have a long lifespan, right? So they live for three days, but they they reproduce really quickly, right? So Ah, so you're banking on the reproduction, right? Well, no, the problem is that they run out of food and then they all die. Right, because they run out of food since there's too many of them. Because as they die, well, each one could make like 300 more. Oh. So once they cover the plate, they eat all the food and then they all die. What do they eat? Uh, e. coli or other types of bacteria. Oh. So oh. Um, some nematodes are parasites, so they eat like plants and stuff. So they're really bad for crops. There are very few that parasitize humans. Uh, not many, proportionally, not many. And then there are some that eat each other some nematodes oh, eat each other cannibalistic is, nematodes yeah i want to see it happen i have not same are you yet. kidding i would love yeah yeah so there are a lot of nematode labs like research labs most big institutions for genomics have them because okay. they are transparent they're really cheap and they're really easy to maintain and they reproduce quickly so it's just they're re- really oh, easy just a very study. ideal lab yeah so they're really good for model organisms again because they're cheap like that's uh-huh. one big thing like if they're uh-huh. easy to maintain and cheap that's like a big winner in everyone's book which is why nematodes are great fruit flies are great etc okay have you done any kind of dissection since high school Mm, yeah so we did before you started entering the genetics of dogs and all that stuff yeah so freshman year in general biology I actually took a different route on labs because there's two different lab options so I took one where we worked with bacteriophage which are just viruses that infect bacteria okay but the normal labs they also did dissections and I've TA'd for that class and I've also 
I also did some dissections with my friend because we just wanted to do it too. And we're like, we're nerds. So we're like, can we do it too? So Mm -hmm. freshman year, I had that kind of time. So yeah, so we, we did some like the round worms. So they're kind of like, they're like this big, like lengthwise, they're this big. And they're like Mm -hmm. probably the thickness of my finger or so. Um, We did like these big grasshopper things. We did, uh, we did fetal pigs. That was the big one. Yeah, so those are pretty cool. How was that? That was pretty cool. Um, everyone kept saying, like, Wilbur or something. Or someone was like, Bacon. And I was like, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, dissections aren't that interesting. You kind of just open them up, and then you identify the different Yeah, I feel like the, the process of with the knife will give me the rush for about 10 seconds. And yeah, then so cutting it open is fun, but then you have to memorize everything in there and i'm like do i care about your organs? enough enough afterwards you're like no, yeah no, no, so that's why no. my friend and i who weren't in the class we just dissected them and then we didn't have to memorize it because we weren't in the class so thank goodness i feel yeah. like that's what <laughs> non-committed <laughs> dissection yeah except i had to teach it this past year so like the students would be like um what is this structure so i actually have to know some things and i'd be like uh that's the stomach they're like no it's not i'm like then why'd you ask <laughs> I'm not a good TA. It's fine. <laughs> I try. Then why'd you ask? I love yeah, that. I'm like, if you know, why'd you ask me? Goodness gracious. I might take this out because I don't want any of my employers to Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not a good person. They're like, huh? Uh, they're like, oh, we're gonna, like, next year, they'll be like, oh, we're not gonna hire you this year because we saw your video where you said you don't know any of the structures of the fetal like, pig. No, we're not doing like, that. Um, Fetal pigs. Yeah. That's so interesting. They're like this big. Oh, shoot. They're yeah, like actually, this big. I would say this, though. I do agree with you. The actual act of dissecting is fun. But doing the reports and the paperwork after is kind of the same. Yeah. So I feel like that's, like, why... I mean, I wanted to be a doctor for a bit, too, like a surgeon. But then, not that this is why I didn't want to do it, but also I heard that there's a lot of paperwork, and that part does not sound appealing. I'm like, mm-hmm. I think the rush of, like... The actual act surgery of, is cool. of cutting people up is... Yeah, and then you have to document it after. I'm like, mm. Yeah, it, well, I feel like a lot of the things that we see on the media or whatever is really just 10%, 20% of the actual job itself. Yeah. Because the rest is literally you have consultations, yeah. you have to wait for three weeks for the blood test, and then before you even get your hands in their body. So it's just... Yeah, I mean, <sighs> obviously, like, TV shows just kind of suck. And they glamorize a lot of things. Of course, yeah. Right? Because they're trying to make it entertaining and exciting. There's a lot of people who think that residency is going to be like Grey's Anatomy. And I'm like, girl, you are going to be disappointed. <laughs> like, My first of all, everyone won't be that hot. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you're also not going to date your attending. You're you also... don't have time. You don't have time to date yeah. your <laughs> I'm like, also, like, it's not legal. <laughs> like, it's your boss. And I'm going to fight against and I'm going to put my yeah i just i yeah i'm like you'll get fired you'll get sued for malpractice and then you'll be on your way there's a lot of yeah it's a lot of red tape with everything like you have to be legal with a lot of stuff especially a medical opinion is a really big deal so right and like honestly that it's great for the doctors but just for me i feel like it'd be so restricting i don't think it'd be as fun not that people are doctors for fun maybe they are but yeah i don't know i mean they're probably doing for the money yeah, that's probably a big reason. I just don't understand the I want to help people reason because that you could do other things to help people, honestly. Like, there are a lot of other things. going this direction, but yeah, I don't know why you want to help people. Yeah, like, okay, sorry, I wasn't going there. I was saying, <laughs> if you're going to be a doctor, you have to have another reason apart from you just want to help people because that's okay. not a good enough reason to do it because there are other ways to help people. That is true. And being a doctor isn't just about it, helping I people. I feel like it, it has to all kind of make sense for the person who is pursuing this direction. So they have to, yes, the helping people thing will constitute as part of the factors, but not the Mm -hmm. singular deciding factor. Well, like, if you're aware of, like, yeah, I want to help people, and I also want enough money so that my children don't have to worry about their college tuition, I'm like, great, that's a good reason. Go for it, you know, whatever. But also, there are other ways to do it, too, you know. I mean, yeah, if you're there just to get a plaque and then have your own office and talk, you know, and just because you're into that, go for it. I mean, yeah, like, if you want the recognition and, like, the honor and the power, which a lot of people do, I'm like, that is a better reason. But if you just are saying you want to help people, I'm like, I don't believe it. Was it the it. motto of the show, don't be a hero? Oh, yeah. Don't be a hero. That's our it's new not. Thing. There's no need for it. You, yeah. you could. And we don't shame you for if you did. But... I, uh, you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. 
I'm trying to be like PC today because I'm learning something. Like, I try to yeah. be like a nice person and you realize you're not nice. I'm like, yeah. Of I mean, I think this is a lot more clear when it's like less back and forth. If you're being a little more quiet than I am, where I think my consume comes out more. <laughs> Right? Because usually I'm a lot more play and I think that you bring that out, but when you're staying more quiet... I mean, I am absorbing things. Yeah. I mean, all but, I know is that sci-fi films really are not an accurate depiction, which yeah. I mean, we already should have known. Which we know that, yeah. If I mean, you and think I'm not that really it's pushing accurate, for it, yeah, yeah, it's just, of course. Um, I just find it hilarious though, because now, because of being associated with you, having talked to you about these kind of things, whenever I watch shows that have any sort of reference to anything genetic, I kind of start laughing at myself. <laughs> so you should ask me, send it over and I'll get mad. <laughs> I mean, the other day I was watching Jupiter Ascending and they're like, oh, I spliced my DNA with a wolf and therefore I have ears. And it's like, no. Oh my goodness, that's so painful. Like, I have an instinct where I need to be part of the pack. That's so painful. If anything, it might be like you could have some evolutionary history in your genome, you know, where we had our common Already, ancestor with the wolves. You can't yeah. add it in. Like, it's not like, what let's makes just me laugh add though, it in. Like, it doesn't make any sense. For that particular movie, I would say that they must have had a lot of different ideas and they just didn't really know how to cohesively mix well, it. Well, that's why you hire... An advisor. Better writers. <laughs> well, that well. too. But you know, you you hire someone who is in the field. You know, who can tell you. About yes. It, like. That. Yes, I agree. I mean, think about it this way: there's so many things going on in that film, but they didn't know if they should be a comedy. They didn't know if they should invite. If they were going for the werewolf situation, because you know how it is. That's fair. Because there, because if you're gonna go werewolf direction, then just stick to fantasy. Don't make it sci-fi, because it's not gonna be able to be explained. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay, I think sci-fi is really cool, and I love sci-fi. But as a TI user, I think it has to be consistent at least within that world. Otherwise, it's mm. like really hard for me to enjoy the story. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I don't yeah, have to see it in today's framework, but I have to see it in their framework at least. And if I can't, then I won't. so that you could suspend your disbelief and be like, okay, we'll take yeah. it. Yeah, and can't. I love sci-fi. I do, but like, I love me a good sci-fi that's internally consistent. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, I can respect that actually because. Um, Maybe I'm moving past my typical kind of consumption of sci-fi films where I'm like, oh, look, it's a space opera, fun. And then you go about it, keep, re- you know, you start picking up information and you go, no, I need to start getting more into the harder side of sci-fi because that makes it more appreciate. I don't know. I feel like I tend to appreciate harder mm-hmm. sci-fi now. Have you seen Interstellar? I did and I didn't like it. Okay, I got really mad at that one part where like they went to the, the, the planet with just the big waves Oh yeah. Right? Because they were like like they got back to the ship and like seven years had passed or something. A long time had passed, or no, yeah. maybe it was like twenty some years. And they didn't realize when they went there that she had only been there for a couple of hours, you know, and like to them it had been many years, right? Because yeah. they were like like I'm like, how did you not realize that when you were saying, When we go there, this is how long time will be. But they didn't realize that she had only been there for that little time then. I was like, that is the stupidest part of the whole movie. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know yeah, what part? Yeah. Like, and they said the when they go it, there, yeah. every 30 minutes or every hour, is going to be seven years so or something like that. So they said that, and they were still surprised. But they didn't realize that that meant that girl who was there had also only been there for that little time. And I was like, how did you not realize that? How Wait, was it Interstellar that, I'm, that I couldn't understand? Wait, hold on. I think Interstellar was the one I actually did not mind. Mm. Oh, wait, no. I, it's the one, I think this is the one I got pissed off about. <laughs> what part? Was it like the, the, uh, yeah, the stupid the watch? How it was like the whole thing where it ended up in love solves everything. That's it the does. part that pissed me off. It's love. What do you mean? Aren't you an NF? Love solves everything. Aren't you solves an ND? Why do you have to try to teach me about that? I know. <laughs> you everything. don't believe in it. What do you mean? Excuse me. I know everything about love. <laughs> does it mean you have to believe in it? I believe in it. I believe in love. Love can solve anything. Love can go through black holes, through dimensions. <laughs> Ugh, I'm gonna drink some See, water. I'm like, I'm, going, I'm waiting for you to like make it keep going for it. Because <laughs> it's, like, it's gonna hit you eventually. I'm like, yeah, she's gonna keep going. It hurts me. My feelers, my hand. <laughs> I feel like eventually you're just gonna like break and just be like, I hate everybody. I'm I like, hate you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Life. Anyway, thank you for joining us on this episode where we pretended to talk about biology and we kind of didn't talk hey, about it. Hey, I learned something. What'd you learn? I can't. 
recall it right away as to, I need to s- sit and watch it. Again. I learned that love solves everything. Yeah, that is definitely something and, I did not accept. <laughs> well, I learned it. So we each learned something today. You do not recall, and I learned about love. Anyway, so thank you for joining us on this episode, and we will see you on the next one. No love. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>